Morning all. Hi. Tis a Monday morning it is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. How are we doing? Holiday. Right. Yeah, love and love holiday. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, I'm Everybody just yeah, shut up. Um so we're back into auction week. Um on, it don't be long coming around. No, it don't be long coming around. We were only done it there uh two weeks ago, three weeks ago. And it was only yesterday. <laughs> it was yesterday. And then we got all the, the packing and shipping and everything else going and then start yeah. collecting again and we, we, we go again and it's great and, and look, long long may it last. Um until we get a break. Holiday. Anyhow we need to talk about that. I have a plan. Woohoo! Uh you're not gonna like it. Bushmills, <laughs> I'm not gonna like it. You come over. Bushmills. Um so Paul is is driving the living life out of uh, Belfast Whiskey Week. Yes. And this is where it all started. I mean, Northern Ireland has got a massive history in Irish whiskey. Uh, and Bushmills was one of the, the last men standing, unfortunately, when, when it all declined. They're all coming back now. You've got the Dunvilles back. You've got the Old Comer back. You've all the New Breed. You've got the Hinch. You've got the Short Cross. You've got Cologne. You've got, Matt there's Darcy. loads of them, but they're all coming. Yeah. Matt Darcy's. Yeah. County Down is going to be a hub of Irish whiskey. It really is. Um, yeah. Because there's so stuff. And then you've got all the, the brands that are plans as well, O'Connell's and all that in Belfast as well. Uh, and then if you count the province of Ulster, you've got your Donegal lads up there as well. So, Bushmills, I wanted to talk about that. Uh, there's two different... I mean, a lot of the guys who are relatively new to Irish whiskey would only be looking at the Causeway Coast and it got huge attraction, huge followings um, because they brought out the... They really pushed it. Like, they they really did, yeah. It, yeah. But I mean, about time is the other side. But I mean, they haven't... Right. They weren't... I mean, we always said that they were the sleeping giant of the north and they... Look we, at you. The puns. Ah, the Giant's yeah. Causeway. Okay. No. The Causeway... I didn't look at that. <laughs> Um, we were talking about um, they had age stock. I mean, yeah. everybody knew they had age stock. I mean, uh, a lot of the, the the newer whiskey that was being refinished, the age stock, some of it would have come originally from Bushmills, would have been distilled in Bushmills. So everybody knows about the the, the Causeway collection. So you've got uh, the cognac cast that was done for the German market. The Moscatel was here in Ireland. The Duro, the Portuguese, the Banyols was Sweden. Sweden, yeah, it was Sweden. Uh, the Malaga, there's two variants of the Malaga cask. There's the older one, the 91 one, and the 95 one. The 01 Fouillet cask, people lost their proverbials over that. It is. There's only 168 bottles of it. It is very hard to get. We've one of them in the auction. The 30 year old, which probably is one of my favorite presentations, but the the opening up in the picture and open the up <laughs> Yeah. That's just the opening up. Uh, is it what's that? It's like the Causeway it stones. Is a hexagonal? Yeah. Do you remember them shapes from school? Kinda. Kinda. Um nah, the presentation. Funny. It is just stunning. Um they're only available in the airport. Um at the time when nobody was going through the airport, unfortunately. I mean I'm sure the plans were afoot for it for a while, but look, I think people managed to uh Wangled them out of the airport. Yeah. yeah, they did. There was people I don't think that were going on flights, but they got bottles. More power um, to their elbows. More power to their elbows. Uh, finished in New American Oak, but just look at the presentation. Yeah, I mean, it's right. impressive. It really, really is. Uh, thank you. Thanks don't want to lose that. Don't want to lose that. Um, there is this one. This was the rare casks. Um, guys were sort of arguing whether it was part of the Causeway collection or it was part of a, a new collection for America. And um, this again was only available in America. Limited release number one. Uh, again, lovely white crisp. That box so just pops. Pop it, isn't it? It's lovely. Um, they're hard to get on this side of the this side of the water as well. Again, because nobody was travelling. So that's what people would know as the modern Causeway collection and Bushmills the and all that. Bushmills. The modern Bushmills. But Bushmills has a huge history in Ireland, and I mean, we, we go back to the the Black Bush, your daddy's favourite whiskey. Yeah. Uh, White Bush, uh, and they would have been called the original. Black Bush wasn't called Black Bush, it was called Bush, Bush Mills. Um, and they have a huge selection and availability of bottles. And it's great, I, I didn't take one of them down, but the Millennium Malls, I mean, again, the Millennium Malls to me are massive value oh, for money. Blue, do, in the sleeves, yeah, in yeah. the sleeves, uh, the green and gold sleeves. Yeah. 
Um, some of them are, are 1982, so they were an 18 year old single malt. Some of them were 1975, so that's a 25 year old single malt. Mm -hmm. An Irish single malt, 25 year old, and they were selling for 250, 300 euros. They were going very, very cheap. Um, huh? It is a bargain mm -hmm. for a 25 year old single malt of a, a, a proper Irish one. Yeah. Um, there's also the blends, so they've got. Here's one stage around 1960s, I believe, um, 1960s, 1970s. It's very rare to get these with the boxes. And I think the boxes are fantastic. Look how shiny they are. There's two of them that are shiny. Uh, so special old liqueur whiskey and then Bushmills. Again, 26 and two third fluent ounces. I think I weighed that when I was born. <laughs> My mother would say, you were never a small baby. Chunky monkey. Chunky monkey. Uh, Bushmill 16 year old. Um, probably one of my favorite single malts. That would have been originally crystal malt. Yeah. Phenomenal really like whiskey. That. I really, really like that. Some of the old tens, the, 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 the 400 anniversary ones. Again, fantastic. There's another 400 anniversary ones. Um, the bourbon cast, the sherry cast, the port cast, they're all from the steamship series. There is the uh, Asian release Bushmills. That one is an odd one. This is a distillery reserve. And this was done for Snow Patrol. Yeah, is that how you say it? No. Snow Patrol. Hey. Um, that's, special not, that's not how we speak up here. No taking the piss out of the boys up and snow at home. <laughs> um, this was uh, a special edition cask that was or bottling that was done for snow at home, uh, and it's on the bottle. Uh, all the places feel like home. All these places feel like home. Ah, you can nice. read too. I can read as well. Um, that's nice. That's good. All these places feel like home. I, that's why a lot of I think uh, expat people love. Bushmills, because again, it would have been it'd be an Irish whiskey. A lot of people would have known it as the Irish whiskey. There's an awful lot of hang-ups and connotations of, of people course, talk about. Oh, you can't be drinking that yeah, whiskey. It's from the north and Nordy whiskey. Yeah. Go away. It's still old Irish whiskey. It's still old Irish whiskey. Here is something that I think most people ignored or didn't know or missed. Everybody talks about the Middleton Very Rares and, and they, they collect the Middleton yes. Very Rares. But the Bushmills 21 year old have and have had for some considerable time a year, an annual release. So that one's 2015. Mm -hmm. So you could, in theory, have a don't annual start collection. On another one. Well, people are moving away from Middleton because the prices have yeah, got, did get out true. of. You know, if you were trying to fill gaps on the Middleton collection, it was tough going there. It really was tough going. I mean, the prices were, again, they have come back a bit. We're in the middle of summer. July is always traditionally a, a softer month for the auctions in here. If we look back at the, yeah, the UK kids auctions, school, everybody kids, going to Hollybops. Everybody going to Hollybops. <laughs> um, and this year especially, I mean, this year it's going to be, people are going to be like caged dogs because it's just, yeah. you know, be like, uh, Beardy Dave and his calves. You know when he lets them out in the field for the first time after the after being locked up all winter and the calves are buck lapping and jumping all around the place. Yeah. That's what Irish people are going to be like at the minute. We're going to be like buck clapping calves. Because we've been caged. We're out in the field now full of nice green grass. Sun and pubs, shining. Sun shining and buck lapping and going buck she mad. Dave, you can do a video of that, actually. Dave, if you want to do it, do a video of the calves. I know now we've probably missed the boat and the calves are already out and all that sort of stuff. But if you want to come on and talk about the calves and we can talk about seen it. seen him yesterday. We, did see Beardy Dave yesterday? We beeped and waved. Yes, we did. We drove past the dingle wagon. Did. That's it. I know, but we have to finish this video. Could be worse than dingle berries or something like that. Uh, so, Bushmills. That's it. That's my today's rant. We'll rant tomorrow. We'll rant again tomorrow. Bye.